everyone, Sean Harmon with Canto USA here again to talk about questions and answers. One of the questions that we get is, what kind of follow spot should I get for my situation? For me, this all starts with lamp type and quality of light. Do I want incandescent? Because I'm in a room that's full of incandescent. I don't worry, want to worry about the color shift. Um, MSR. I have a lot of moving lights and I'd like for my follow spots to kind of blend in with the, uh, the, follow, with the moving lights. Um, do I have a big venue? Maybe Xenon is the right choice for me. Or maybe I'm looking for LED because I'm going into the future, I'm looking into the future, and I'm trying to make the right choice, especially now that LED is kind of filling in where a lot of these products have been for a very long time. So that gives us our first place to look. And once we kind of figure out which lamp type we want to start with, that's going to knock a lot of the other things out of the picture. So we've kind of subtracted down to whatever we need for our light source. Second question, where is the follow spot going to go? Is it going to go into a booth, a catwalk, into the audience? Where is it going to live? And then that's also going to have a big factor on power. What kind of power do I have in that situation? Does this follow spot have to be 120? Can it be 208? Can it, does it need to be three-phase? Do you have three-phase available in that spot? Figuring out your power is very important. And a lot of consultants will also talk about noise because they don't want a very loud follow spot in an audience, whereas in a booth, they may be a little less concerned about it. Once you figure that out, power, location, noise, now we've subtracted out a whole lot of follow spots. And now we're starting to get down into the core of what we're going to, to evaluate for our situation. So once we've figured out where that follow spot's going to go, we need to figure out the distance from that follow spot to center stage. Because obviously, light over distance gets less bright. It's very bright at the fixture. It gets dimmer the further away you get. I know that was obvious for some of you. <laughs> um, once we have that, now we can look at how bright does it need to be at that point on stage. And my favorite way to do that is to say, Think about your last season. How bright was it at your at that point on stage, center stage? Now, I'm not talking about go into your theater and turn all the lights front of house on to full. That is not the look you're looking for. You're looking for an actual look, a wash that you created on the stage. And how bright was that? And then, if you have a performer that's performing in that spot and you want the follow spot on them, how much brighter do you want them to be than everything else around them? Half again is bright, twice as bright, three times as bright. I don't know. That's completely a subjective question for you. But you've got to figure out how much brighter you want them to be so that we can figure out what this follow spot needs to be. Personally, I like to start at a two to one. So if I have a 100-foot candle wash on the stage, and I have a person standing in 100-foot candles, and I want them to be twice as bright, my follow spot has to be a little bit brighter than 100 foot candles at that distance. So let's say 100 foot candles at 100 feet. Kind of makes sense, right? You got 100 foot candles, you hit them with another 100, now they're 200 foot candles. That's a two to one. I think that's a great place to start. Now, I would also caution you and say that all the photometric testing that we do is with no gel and no diffusion. So I like to add a little bit of safety factor in there. So I would say if I want 100 foot candles at 100 feet on that stage, I want to be 110 to 125 foot candles, depending on if I have glass in there and how much I like to use like minus, or, uh, minus green or some diffusion. So I think that's a great way. And now you can go and look at cut sheets. You can look at that 100 foot distance. You can figure out what works best for you because we figured out what source we want, what distance we're at, and now we're just looking at intensity. That's really all you need. Um, and so that should help you narrow it down. And then you can talk about price and price point with your local dealer. If you have any questions or comments, maybe you completely disagree with me on two to one. I'd love to hear the comments. I love the, the discourse that happens in this community. Uh, feel free to you know, leave comments or give us a call here at CantoUSA, CantoUSA.com. Thanks, everybody.